welcome back to the Trash and Icon. I am your host, G. Spencer Morton, and on this episode, the G stands for gift giving is an art, and that art is dying, and that bothers me to no end. It's a long name, that's why I shortened it. You put all of that on a government form. Where together we will turn crap into couture, garbage into glamour, and trash into trashin. Can you tell I've been watching a lot of Dynasty? In each episode, we will be exploring a new kind of trash, garbage, or wasted material and find a way to turn that material into fashion, aka trashin. We will be taking inspiration from a variety of sources, from fashion history, to literature, to film, music. Everything I use will be garbage, recycled, or secondhand in some way. I make absolutely no guarantee it will be a success, but I do guarantee it will be an adventure. In this episode, we will be looking at the festive, flamboyant, floating theme that is foil balloons. These sleeves are changing me as a person, and I'm enjoying it. I, like most people, get balloons for any number of occasions, for graduations, holidays, birthdays, and I always find them to be a really confusing gift. Because on the one hand, it's like, oh, it's this big bunch of these floating, colorful things that it's... It's got a lot of energy and it's very vibrant. It's like, oh, you went to all the trouble of getting a whole $15 of balloons. Here you go. And then you have to like hold on and take care of this gift. Like they've passed this torch of responsibility to you being like, oh, I thought you would like more responsibility for your birthday. It doesn't seem very like thought through, if you know what I mean. It's kind of like when someone gets you a bouquet of flowers for a date. Again, I have experienced this from my many, many suitors as we've discussed, of which are all in the audience tonight. <laughs> Hello, people. You will never deserve me. Nobody does. Oh, it's this very thoughtful romantic gift that you then have to, like, carry with you on the entire date and try not to destroy and you have to be responsible for. It's a nice gesture, but it's not very thought through. And that's the problem. If it's the thought that matters, you didn't think this through, and it bothers me. So that's why gift giving is a dying art and that bothers me. This I was initially inspired by these beautiful, uh, overwhelmingly dramatic coats by Yves Saint Laurent and Alexander McQueen. And I was very interested in doing these huge sleeves and these big draping backs that carried on forever and ever. And I realized in order to make that shape, I would have had to, um, get a bunch of these balloons, cut them in half, and make one giant piece of fabric with them, basically making a heat sealed quilt, if you will, and then use a pattern to cut out the shapes, which would have been a really interesting option, but I felt like each balloon had such a unique shape, color scheme, and had so much personality that I really wanted to use the most of that balloon's personality. Um, my inspiration for making this mylar balloon robe is because I recently saw an image of Reuben Cain, an Australian drag performer, comedian, and generally delightful person, and he had created this giant coat out of uh, garbage bags, and it looked amazing. It looked incredible on stage, and I was like, oh, I really want to make that, but then I was like, but it's already been done. What I wound up creating is more of this harlequin quilt of balloons that best utilizes each of their shapes and colors. The silhouette that I wound up with is much more akin to these Alexander McQueen pieces and it's very much reminiscent of this classic design called a handkerchief dress where you have a very straight bodice uh, bias cut skirt that initially was made of a bunch of handkerchiefs. It's very 1920s, 1930s, it's very Downton Abbey or Miss Fisher. It's what more, it's more accurate to what flappers and people in 1920s would actually have been wearing. One of the big problems with balloons, besides the fact that they're a terrible gift, is that they're also very wasteful. Mylar, which is used to make uh, foiled balloons shiny, is not only non-recyclable, it's non-biodegradable. And also you can't recycle it in your home trash. You can't just put it in the bin. It can't be recycled properly. And one of the biggest problems with balloons is that we don't even try to recycle them. We just let the balloons go off into the breeze and off into the winds and the breeze and the trees and the land and the water into the fish, into the turtles, into the birds. 
and a lot of animals try to eat the balloons or they get tangled up and they they die a very tragic deaths or even worse balloons can drift off into power lines causing combustion power outages and uh, trees to catch on fire which was one of the cited causes of the california wildfires is just mylar balloons floating off into the nowhere lands and getting caught in the power lines and they go <laughs> and then the trees catch on fire or the grass catches on fire and then we have fire and now we don't have lake tahoe anymore and it's just completely avoidable and if you think that a few stray balloons is no big deal have a look at chicago 1986 and you tell me it's fine you tell me that was fine or the hindenburg because when you think about it the hindenburg was one giant mylar balloon and it's crashing it's crashing terrible oh my get out of the way please it's burning and bursting into flames and, and it's falling on the morning fast and all the folks between that this is terrible this is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world all the humanity and all the fans. and on top of like killing animals and power outages and forest fires and blah 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 helium is actually also a precious resource and unfortunately helium itself is a fairly significant ecological footprint while it's not a pollutive it's unsustainable we're running out of easy to access helium quickly because of its extensive use in unnecessary products such as balloons we need helium for other products that we treasure such as mri machines fiber optics and lcd screens while we may never truly run out of helium because it's always present in the air, it is important to never be wasteful of any valuable resource. This is why it's a terrible gift. It's a bad gift on every level. I'm just putting it out there. Don't get... I didn't know I was going to be so impassioned about balloons and then I learned about how terrible they are. And it's not the balloon's fault. It's our fault. Balloons are the Frankensteins we've created and it's up to us to stop them. So just to review, balloons are a lazy gift, uh, non-recyclable, non-biodegradable, can cause power outages and forest fires, can kill animals, can destroy our environment, or contribute to destroying our environment. We're the ones destroying the environment. And also they're a huge waste of helium. That's seven reasons not to get balloons. So I don't want to hear any excuses. Also, the Hindenburg. All the humanity and all the fans. On the bright side, if you are in a position where you already have a bunch of balloons or want to start saving the balloons that you receive because you're around people who don't care about the environment, how dare you get balloons for a child's birthday party, you monster! <sighs> then there's actually quite a lot of fun to be had. Once they've started deflating or you help by uh, inhaling the helium for a few moments of pure joy, then you can get crafty with the leftover balloon. I find the Mylar both very flexible and distinct and really enjoy the way that it moves and the way that it has a lot of personality as it moves. And it's actually really fun to experiment with because, you know, you can make it a hat, you can make it a brooch, you can make it a pterodactyl. Like a lot of softer plastics, they're too thin and too delicate for you to sew on because the needles just cut right through. So your best option is to either glue them, which can take a lot of time and also be relatively unreliable, but using heat is your best friend for this. So you can manipulate it in all kinds of ways with like a heat gun or an iron or a really dangerous blow dryer. Like maybe don't put that near your head, but it could work really well for this. And despite my initial inspiration, I wound up creating a very different, but very interesting shape. I started creating a very straight bodice and created these expanding layers of balloons that sort of look like flower petals or uh, stained glass actually so as usual you can go into trashing with a very strong concept and a will of iron and come out with a completely different design because you're not in charge the material is <laughs>
as I receive or collect more balloons, I can just keep expanding to it. I can keep adding more and more balloons to the hem of this coat, robe, garment, dress thing and just let it continue to, to expand which makes for a really interesting ongoing project and kind of attests to the ongoing nature of trashing. Because while we can keep making efforts, more waste is made every day. And adding to this code is sort of a an ongoing calendar of events and celebrations and birthdays. And I think that's a very interesting idea to create a trashing project that you can keep adding to and reinventing and giving more life because that means the attraction is ongoing and you're addressing an ongoing issue and hopefully we can do an update in a couple of months and show you how far it's come if you'd like to see that please let me know i always thought these kinds of dresses looked like a beautiful pair of like butterfly wings or an abundance of butterfly wings which is even more obvious in the symmetrical color layout this idea of the butterfly, balloons, and birthdays all work really well together as a way to communicate rebirth and change and evolution. And as I add more balloons, the wings will continue to grow. And the idea of these, this, these growing wings as a symbol of change and evolution and growth is a very uplifting concept for what is ultimately a pollutant. And that's a very optimistic um, accompaniment to our last episode where it felt like growth was impossible but it, it is possible and we keep growing and we keep overcoming challenges. Thank you for joining us on another exciting episode of The Trash and Icon. I have been your host, The Trash and Icon. My new aesthetic is 1980s magician in Vegas. It's niche because it's just me. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this episode or have any thoughts, feelings, or opinions, please leave a like and a comment down below. This show is brought to you by the Sonoma Community Center and the Sonoma Trash and Fashion Show. Help support your local trash and icons by either making a donation or consider renting or purchasing a digital version of the 2021 Sonoma Trash and Fashion Show, available via the link in the description. Thank you for joining us and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye! See you.